Hey, what's up, you guys? Today, we're gonna to be talking about how Shane Dawson just exposed the psychological techniques that marketers use to get you to buy stuff. What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health, and what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, I wanna send a huge thank you to everybody who joined me for the Shane Dawson Conspiracy Theory part one viewing party that we had over on my channel. For most of the live stream, we had between like 160 to 200 people. Very cool, very, very cool. I love all of you. It, and like Tristan was in it too, so make sure you watch the replay because my beautiful girlfriend Tristan was in there, all right? But yeah, anyways, um, I asked you guys on Twitter what topics, what mental health topics you wanted me to talk about for, you know, uh, recaps of this first conspiracy um, video. And a lot of you mentioned the one about uh, the cartoons and, you know, like depression medications and all that stuff. And yeah, I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um, there's a lot of psychology and also some philosophy that goes along with that. But tonight I wanted to focus on the marketing techniques, all right? So those of you who don't know me, a lot of you know me, but you don't know me, know me. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, my background is in sales and marketing. And one of the things is that I've always been fascinated by marketing and sales and everything just because I've been fascinated by psychology, right? So if any of you watched my video I did about like, this guy is uh, crazier than David Dobrik. And it was about the psychologist who did like the original like clickbait, right? He was the first guy to like blend, um, products with celebrities and he was a psychologist who left psychology to go work at an ad agency all right but anyways what shane dawson talks about in this it's not really it's not really a conspiracy it's just psychology it's psychological techniques that advertisers use marketers use retailers use okay so he talks about like children you know um in the grocery store they put you know sugary things on the lower shelves because they're there for kids but something i mentioned on the live stream is this if you notice in grocery stores as well they put milk and eggs in the back they're always in the back of the store don't believe me check next time and the reason behind this is because those are the most commonly bought items and they want you to have to walk past everything else in order to get there, right? So that way you're more likely to buy other things, all right? So a lot of these things that marketers are doing is to get you to buy. Now, this goes way deeper than that, way, way, way deeper than that. And I'm glad that Shane brought this up in a video to kind of get your wheels turning, all right? Like, here's the thing. There are so many psychological techniques that are using you to buy things and it's important to be mindful of those so you spend your money in the right place and you're not doing the wrong things and you know like because a lot of us are chasing that idea or of if I can buy this, if I can buy that, then I'll be happy, right? And this goes back to the psychology, or not even psychology, but the philosophy from Buddhism called the hungry ghost, right? We as people, we as people are like these hungry ghosts. We keep trying to get more, 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 and we're never fulfilled, all right? So, there's other things that happen, and it's actually with the foods that you eat. So there's a book that was written by an investigative journalist called Sugar, Salts, and Fats, all right? And this dude did research and of the food industry. The different food um, producers, the people who make foods, they have scientists there. They have scientists there who design food to make you crave more of it through sugar, salts, and fats, okay? So you know how I talk about your brain and how we're wired to repeat certain actions? Okay, this is something called the habit loop. So they will find ways to make food trigger different parts of your neurotransmitters in your brain to make you crave that food even more, all right? So this is something that happens. But when we look at advertising as a whole, something that's in that book, Lost Connections, congratulations to all the winners who won over on Instagram. Like one of my favorite parts is when they talk about the advertising industry. And one of my favorite quotes from that book is something along the lines of, the worst advertisement ever would be one that told you that you're perfect just the way that you are. 
right? Because why would they do that? How are they supposed to buy, uh, get you to buy something if you feel great about yourself? If there was an advertisement that said, you are perfect the way you are, everybody loves you, you don't need anything, right? How are they supposed to sell any product? So they're always trying to push something, make you look better, feel better, right? Oh, if you buy this, you're gonna get that guy, you're gonna get that girl. Or if you get this, then your friends are gonna appreciate you and all of that, right? But these are techniques used all over the place. And the answer to all these things is mindfulness. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, mindfulness once again. Checking in with yourself and saying, why do I wanna buy this thing? Why do I want that car? Why do I want this furniture, right? Like, I know so many people, like right now, I know a lot of people are struggling with money, but like, take a look around your house. Like, pause this video real quick and take a look around your house and see how many things that you bought to impress other people, right? Maybe you got this couch, right? Maybe you got this dining room table, or maybe you got you know these fancy you know little statues around your house, and they're not for you, but you wanted to impress people when they came over, okay? So there's something that I actually learned from the Philosophy Channel Wisecrack, which is called Conspicuous Consumption, okay? And this is a philosophy about how we buy things to impress other people, okay? I like, think about that. Think about why you bought the type of car you have. Is that a way for you to flex on other people, to show people your status? Because we are creatures that are trying to show social status. They actually did some really interesting experiments not even experiments, just observing uh, gorillas out in the wild. They do the same thing. It's pretty crazy how they do the Gorillas don't buy cars or anything, but whatever. But like this stuff's happening all the time. And this is why like us YouTubers, a lot of us kind of laugh when you get upset about like clickbait and things like that, because all YouTubers are doing it. And I was actually cracking up and tweeted out uh, attacking Leon Lush because I respect his game when he said this. So also, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you probably noticed I did title the video Video, these youtubers are pretending they're dying version 2 or whatever and yeah for two reasons a because they are pretending they're dying in a different capacity than our boys over at extreme games are and two because that title performed so well the last time I uploaded it I'd be an idiot not to try it again that's all that's right like Leon explained why he titled the video the way he did like that's one of the reasons I title my videos the way I do I know they're gonna get clicks I know that you're gonna check them out and why do I want them to want you to check them out because I want to teach you uh, how to improve your mental and emotional well-being right so be mindful of these things somebody called me out in the Facebook group uh, the other day and said Chris what's your next mindfulness thing that's based on youtubers and I'm thinking about showing you a practice that you can use mindfulness when you're browsing through YouTube thumbnails and titles, things like that. So make sure that you stay tuned. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to marketing, advertising, buying things, trying to fulfill ourselves with external things is extrinsic values versus intrinsic values, all right? So extrinsic values are people who value themselves based on items, right? Based on things, based on things they have. And it might not even be items that you purchase, but it might be a person, right? You value yourself based on, you know, the person that you're with. Or some people value themselves based on the position they have at a job, all right? And these are more likely to make you depressed as well as anxious. Why? Because those are the things that are really outside of your control. People who have intrinsic values are far happier, less symptoms of depression, less symptoms of anxiety, okay? So when you work on finding happiness within without all the other things, then you'll start to be happy. Now, there's something called minimalism. You might know some people who do it. I don't personally do it, maybe eventually someday, but this actually comes from more like kind of Buddhist philosophy. There's actually a channel that my friend Kay from the channel uh, Bipolar Pug introduced me to. I forgot the name of it, but anyways, I had a really cool short documentary about minimalism, but it's kind of living in this way of learning how to not need all these fancy things. And it actually comes from like, you, when you see like Buddhist monks who don't have anything, it's because part of their practice is learning how to be satisfied without all of the fancy stuff, right? But anyways, I do wanna give a shout out to my buddy, Carly Steele. Um, she just made a video that I'm gonna link down below, but she just opened up and got really vulnerable and she actually touched on this and part of being a YouTuber, she has over a million subscribers. And like I always tell you, like I'm trying to learn from other people who, or, you know, bigger YouTubers. Like, what, what's making them happy? What's making them sad? What's, you know, what's going on, right? So Carly opened up and she said this. And we're sad too, we all, especially with YouTube, I know 
so many YouTubers that feel alone and it's just crazy because we have so many people that love us and we still feel alone. And that's because this world is just so superficial and so flooded with with social media and what you want to see. Like, the, I literally go on Instagram and within five minutes, I want to shut it off because I'm like, this girl has the perfect body. She has the perfect hair. She has the perfect face. She has the perfect life. She has the perfect boyfriend. She lives in a nice place. She has the perfect car. But I don't know what she's going through and nobody does and nobody knows her struggles. And it's just really messed up. It's so messed up if you really think about it. So messed up. So yeah, I'm super proud of Carly for this like kind of self-awareness that she's getting. And uh, Tristan and I were watching and I'm like, man, I wish, I wish some other YouTubers made videos like this, like getting that self-awareness and realizing this at such a young age because Carly's like a little sister to me. She's like 20 years old, but she's realizing it. But now Carly needs to check in with herself and be accountable for this. But anyways, like she's working on being a better influence to her audience and all that. And I'm actually going to LA next week to film some collabs with people. And Carly is gonna be in LA too. So her and I are gonna be doing some collabs as well. But anyways, go check that out because this is what we need to see. We need to look at other people. Like something I always try to teach you guys is like if things or fame or money or whatever could make you happy, we would never, we would never have any depressed celebrities. You know what I mean? I was focusing my camera, whatever. It keeps like locking in on Shane, but we'll let it slide. All right, but anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos and I got some more Shane Dawson videos coming up very soon. But anyways, thank you so much to all of the people supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like some exclusive content, become a patron too by clicking top or right there, all right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.